I'm going to start out this video tonight by talking about the TV show Inspector Gadget. But I promise <clears throat> from Inspector Gadget, I'm going to get to places a lot more current and with a lot more cultural resonance. And I am going to try to resolve my discussion about Blue Eye Samurai, which I've been having on this channel. My name is Paul. This is a channel where I talk about issues in technology and education and society. But because it's winter break from school, I've been talking a lot about pop culture and going through some things in movies and TV. So let's talk about Inspector Gadget for a second. Inspector Gadget was a show where pretty much every episode followed roughly the same format, where Dr. Claw, the villain, would be up to some sort of secret plan and Inspector Gadget would get sent in to try to solve it. He would have no idea what was going on. His niece Penny would do most of the work. Some dumb luck would happen where he would end up foiling Dr. Claw's plan without really realizing he was doing so, and the episode would end. And because every episode followed roughly that structure, they could rerun them in whatever order they wanted. You could pay attention to the series. You could not pay attention to the series. You come home from school, watch one. Don't watch it for a couple weeks. Watch another one. You don't even realize that this one was from two years ago or something like that. That was a perfectly acceptable way of making television for a long time. And it's not just true of kids' shows. The same thing was true for Hill Street Blues or even the more sort of structured series like your ERs and your NYPD Blues that started to happen in the 90s. You can still shuffle those around, turn one on, and maybe you're like, oh, so this is after Dr. Green died or something like that. But you could still follow what was happening and enjoy it. We got a real shift, uh, obviously, in the 2010s, in particular 2000s, 2010s, towards more like narrative structured TV shows, um, which did lots of cool things, obviously, with shows like The Sopranos and Breaking Bad and, and Mad Men and et cetera, et cetera. But I would argue that this is where a problem really started to be baked in because the more structured you tried to make your TV show, the more you tried to make your TV show like a really long movie or a novel on screen, you started to bump up against problems with the format of TV episodes. And there was a solution to those problems, which was called just making a movie. Um, that would have resolved a lot of those issues. Um, but the makers of those shows and the producers of those shows and the people that realized how much more money you could make if you cranked out 10 or 12 episodes and re-ran them as much as you wanted and so on and so forth, they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to just make a movie called, like, Walter White Goes Bad. Um, so they made those TV shows, and I watched them and enjoyed them. But there were problems in them, and I would say those problems are continuing to resonate with a lot of shows that are out on TV right now that I honestly think those problems could have been solved just by making them uh, a movie instead. So let's talk about some of what I perceive to be the problems with using television shows as your main cultural storytelling device and foregoing things like movies. One of them is that you can't redeem or condemn the hero. Um, so we had these anti-hero shows that became really popular um, in the 2000s and 2010s, obviously. Uh, all those shows I mentioned earlier uh, were helmed by these sort of brooding anti-hero characters uh, who were bad people but occasionally did noble things and the audience was really fascinated by your Tony Sopranos, your Walter Whites, even your Detective McNulty or whoever else, Jamie Lannister, right? These were all these anti-hero characters. The problem that you run into, if you want to just keep running that person out episode after episode after episode for year after year after year, and they're going to continue to be a bad person, right, on some levels, is you can't redeem them and make them good, right, because then the show is kind of over, right, and you can't make them truly despicable because then the show gets really unpleasant to watch, so as a for example, I would say that the show House of Cards on Netflix attempted to resolve this by just letting their evil protagonist anti-hero character just win and crush all of his opponents. And it made that show really nihilistic and depressing to watch. You had other shows that tried to thread the needle on this, not always successfully. I'll use Mad Men as my touchstone here because you had all these 
fans of Mad Men who complained about it, particularly they complained about the character of Skylar, Walter White's wife, and would say, why isn't, you know, Walter White is not being allowed to do cool things like make meth and be the one who knocks and shoots people and Skylar is such a wet blanket. And the creator of that show, Vince Gilligan, would speak out and say, no, like, Skylar is right, right? She is the voice of reason in all this, and Walter White's a bad person. And so the, the counterpoint that you would see online is that people were misreading the show, right? That people were missing the point by, by saying they just wanted Walter White to do cool things. But there's a reason why they came to view the show that way, right? It, you know, Vince Gilligan might try to tell you that's not what he intended to have happen. Um, but it kind of is, right? The show is predicated on Walter White seeming like a cool guy in some ways. And if you just keep running that out for season after season, of course people start to buy into this. You saw the same thing with Mad Men, where what the criticism of that show in the last several seasons was people saying... Why isn't Don Draper good at advertising anymore? Right? They were trying, you know, the show was trying to explore like the 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 fault lines and the failings and the weaknesses of the Don Draper way of living. But what a lot of the people who liked watching the show wanted to see was Don Draper like belt some whiskey and come up with a brilliant idea and say something misogynistic, right? That's what the audience seemed to be wanting. Um, and it's baked into the nature of that kind of show that if you have this anti-hero kind of main character um you can't redeem them you can't let them win and if you keep trying to balance in that middle ground eventually your fandom starts to identify with that character in creepy ways that the that the creators of the show didn't necessarily intend okay problem number two when you just try to keep running those is one solution to this problem is to make the antagonist the more interesting character Right? A number of shows have created a villain who's even worse, right? And that person becomes where you shift a lot of the dynamic things and a lot of the real viewer interest. And so now that villain character is more interesting. But the problem that you have there is you can now no longer resolve the tension between your lead character and the antagonist because the antagonist is what's drawing people back to the show. And because it's a TV show, you just want it to run forever, right? So you, you know, one of my favorite shows on, on TV right now is Amazon's The Boys, but I'm really getting sort of bored and turned off by it because they can't resolve the conflict with the show's central antagonist, Homelander. You can't kill him, right? You can't have him run away or, and be gone and have some new villain because he's the most interesting character and the most important character, right? Even though Huey and, and the, you know, the, the Aomer from Lord of the Rings or whatever, they are the protagonists of it in a lot of ways, Homelander's more interesting. And if you're just going to keep running it back and running it back and running it back, and because, you know, uh, Jeff Bezos has to make money off of the boys, so we're just going to make as many seasons as we possibly can, you can never resolve the tension. You can never get rid of Homelander. And the third weakness that I will point out about making um, television shows, episodic television shows, the main sort of cultural artifact, the main tool we have for storytelling is it makes it really difficult to have a story with a beginning, a middle and an end because, it, again, it can't really be resolved. And some of these shows might present it as though we've got this big idea for where this is all heading and if we can just get to season four, it's all going to get wrapped up. But the reality is it's a TV show and actors are going to come and go and you're going to get, you know, test screening results back and uh, you're going to need to change the way you're doing things or something like that. And then, you know, some writer is going to quit. Sometimes shows have really benefited from weird things like that. Breaking Bad's an example of a show that got much better as it went along um, because they got a better sense of what that show is supposed to be. And the last couple seasons of Breaking Bad were much better than the first couple. Obviously, something like Game of Thrones really suffers from this problem where that show was just going to sort of truck on into eternity until they decided, no, we really need to wrap this thing up. Everyone's tired of working on it. It costs a fortune. All the actors are aging out of the roles. We're all bored with this. So let's just uh, do some stuff. Right. And I don't think the last season of Game of Thrones is nearly as bad as people said it was, but 
uh, it still was very unsatisfying for pretty much everybody. So you lose this sense of narrative cohesion and narrative purpose. I think a real example of this that's on TV right now is that show Severance that was on Apple TV, where I don't think they were making any effort at all to really have that, have some sort of narrative structure. Um, if you've seen the first season of Severance, I'm not going to spoil it too, too much when I say that it doesn't resolve anything and it leaves it on a cliffhanger that isn't even really a cliffhanger. It's more like it was just the middle of the episode. Um, and there are a number of mysteries that were introduced in Severance, I think just to be weird and interesting, like what they're doing with the goats in that building or something like that. There's no way that they have an actual idea for how that's meant to be resolved. It's just like a goofy thing to have in there. And if you took a show like Severance and instead of making it like a fairly successful but flawed, whatever it was, eight hour TV show that's supposed to lead into multiple other eight hour seasons, you just made like a really good two, two and a half hour movie. I mean, you probably lose all the all the uh, John Turturro stuff, but you're left with, I think, a better show. So I think this is my issue, bringing it back to uh, what ostensibly this series of videos is about. This is my issue with Blue Eye Samurai, which I still think was excellent, but I wasn't nearly as satisfied by the last episode or two as I was by the first set of episodes because I think it ran into all these same problems. They want the main character of Mizo to be um, this sort of conflicted anti-hero, but they can't commit to going fully either way. They cannot um, let her resolve her issues and be a good person because then the show is over. But they also can't make her like truly evil and like let bad things happen because she's so monomaniacally consumed by her desire for revenge because then the show becomes unlikable. So they're going to continue to try to strike that balance instead of resolving it. This is where I'm going to start spoiling the end of Blue Eye Samurai. I'm almost to the end, so you can you can pause here and come back after you finish watching the show. But spoiling it now, there is no resolution to the Fowler revenge arc at the end of the episode. Fowler is still alive and is now her prisoner and they're going to do other stuff because clearly Fowler is too good of a character. They've done the thing where they've created this cool antagonist, right, who's dynamic and interesting. So we can't kill him because this is a TV show. It's meant to just keep puttering along, even though it would make narrative sense for him to get killed at the end of season one. We got to keep him around because he's a cool character. So we're just going to keep happening with this. And then sense of narrative cohesion for me really started to break down at the end of that season as well. Part of the reason I didn't like the last episode was because it got much more interested in plot kind of stuff and moving characters around and things like that than it was interested in wrapping up the themes that I thought were so interesting that were about like how you determine your fate and what makes for a good person and nature versus nurture and all kinds of stuff like that. They kind of bailed on the themes just to keep moving these pieces around on the chessboard. But at the end of the episode, they still hadn't resolved a lot of stuff. There are a lot of things that were just sort of left hanging. We don't really know what's going on with the character of Tygen, right? For example, just one for example, right? And this is just going to sort of float off into forever and they're going to crank out as many seasons as they can instead of just making a really good two-hour movie called Blue Eye Samurai where you trim a lot of the fat off of it. There's probably a lot less about sex workers or something like that. You could eliminate a lot of those subplots and really make it this revenge movie about a character who either destroys their soul in the process of pursuing revenge at all costs or learns an important lesson about life and doesn't end up pursuing their revenge and instead like settling down and being happy with the friends that they made along the way or something like that. But they're not going to let themselves do either of that because this is a TV show and we've got to keep going forever. There's a cool thing called movies that people used to make and get really invested in. I wish they would go back to making more of those. So I maintain that the show, Blue Eye Samurai, which is sort of what this video is about, it's awesome and you should check it out, but it's also emblematic of what I perceive to be some of the problems with a lot of what's happening on TV today. Like the video, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel if you thought this was interesting. I've got another week of vacation here. I'm going to continue making videos about cool things on TV. So leave comments about suggestions for other things I could try to watch or analyze. Uh, otherwise, you guys enjoy the uh, end of the year here, and I will see you on New Year's Eve. Thanks. Good night.